We're now looking at problem number 40 from the muscle physiology problem set. And in this problem, we're asked to compare and contrast cardiac and smooth muscle. And we're looking for a trait among our different answer responses that's true of both cardiac and smooth muscle. And it's really worth noting that it's very important for the purposes of test taking that you carefully read the question and determine are they asking something about skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, or cardiac muscle because it's very, very easy to neglect to look at the type of muscle and I've unfortunately seen many students make simple mistakes where they understood the concept but they just forgot to thoroughly read the question. But in this case we're going to be comparing and contrasting cardiac and smooth. So really the easiest way that we can do this is just to create a little table here and we're going to be looking at cardiac muscle and we're going to be also looking at smooth muscle and so what we can do is we go through each of the different responses is just compare and contrast is this true of cardiac is it true of smooth and we should see at the bottom that there's one characteristic that's true of both cardiac and smooth all right so let's look at our very first response here the control of actin and myosin interactions is attained through the actions of thin filament regulatory proteins. So the first thing we need to think about is, well, which one is the thin filament? So we should automatically, as soon as we see the word thin, think actin. And there's two different regulatory proteins that we discussed that are involved with actin. There is troponin and tropomyosin. So now that we've established that, we need to think about, well, would these characteristics be true of cardiac and would they be true of smooth muscle? So just reading through that, that is true of cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle, we would have calcium entering into the cardiac cell. We would have that calcium binding to troponin, moving the tropomyosin from the groove of the actin, and that would allow myosin to bind. So that's very true of cardiac muscle. All right, what you should also should recognize, though, is that is not true of smooth muscle. In fact, smooth muscle lacks troponin. So we're not seeing troponin being a regulatory process through which we can control smooth muscle contraction. So that allows us to eliminate response A because while the statement is true of cardiac it isn't true of smooth muscle. Alright, so then we go on to response B. So the depolarization of T tubular voltage gated calcium channels leads to calcium release from the end plate. Now one thing that should automatically pop up to you as we're going through this question is once again this isn't true of smooth because they do not have tubules. They will have the cavioli which are similar to t-tubules but they don't invaginate as fully. So just based on terminology alone this particular response would not be true of smooth. Then we need to also go through for future purposes and think about well would this be true of cardiac. So we know that cardiac does have t-tubules and we know that within those T tubules there are our dihydropyridine receptors. So those are going to be voltage gated calcium channels that are going to allow for calcium to enter into the cell and we know that cardiac tissue does undergo the calcium induced calcium release or the CICR and that's actually required for cardiac muscle to operate. So at least that part of it's true. So we know that the depolarization of T-tubular voltage gated calcium channels does lead to calcium release. The question is where is that calcium coming from? With calcium induced calcium release that isn't actually the end plate that's releasing the calcium. It is 
the junctional sarcoplasmic reticulum. So in this case, while the first part of the statement was true, this is really just a nonsense answer. We wouldn't really see the T tubules lead to calcium release from the end plate. That's the wrong terminology. What we should see is it's from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So based on that, we were able to initially say, no, that's not true of smooth. It's also actually not true of cardiac either. Okay. So on to response C. The contractile force generation is influenced by activation of myosin light chain kinase. So let's review for just a minute how myosin light chain kinase works. We know that calcium is able to enter into the cytosol binds to calmodulin, and that leads to the activation of myosin light chain kinase. And that is true in cardiac muscle. It does actually influence the force of contraction. Now, it is a very important thing that might come back. This is not essential to cardiac muscle function. Okay, we don't have to have myosin light chain kinase. But what we do see is it can regulate the force generation for cardiac muscle. So this is a true statement. Although it's not absolutely required, it is still going to be a true statement. That's also a very true statement for smooth muscle. It's actually required for smooth muscle. So we already know before we've gone through the rest of the problem that we know the correct answer. Okay, but let's also talk about what could be going on with the other responses, how we might actually be able to change those for the purposes of a test. Okay, so phosphorylation of the alkali light chain of the myosin molecule is required for force generation during contraction. So we just talked about in the response above that that we do have activation of myosin light chain kinase that would phosphorylate the alkali light chain of myosin. Now the really key word in this statement is required. We saw that we wrote right above that this myosin light chain kinase activity, the phosphorylation of the alkali light chain doesn't certainly increase the contractile force generation for cardiac muscle, but it is not required in cardiac muscle. However, it is required in smooth. So we do have the smooth muscle that requires the phosphorylation of the alkali light chain. It is not actually required of cardiac muscle. Okay. And the last question going down, the contraction occurs by troponin binding of calcium and myosin light chains binding to the uncovered active sites. And this is something that we talked about above. Right? This does certainly occur in the cardiac muscle. We do not see that regulatory role of troponin in smooth muscle, so that would be incorrect of smooth muscle. Okay, so we were able to go through each of our responses. We were able to also continue to eliminate D and E, so the correct answer to this question would be response C. We do have myosin light chain kinase that controls the contractile force generation of cardiac muscle, although it's not essential, and we also see that being the main control mechanism by which smooth muscle contraction is controlled. Okay, so hopefully this was able to clarify your understanding of cardiac and smooth muscle function. As always, please let me know if you have any further questions. <laughs>